been talking about the different kinds of wills or what we will. Um, there's the obvious will to pleasure, which we all seem to have, the pleasure principle. Um, but some people will forsake uh, pleasure for something else, or they will deliberately court discomfort or pain or forego many pleasures in order to achieve other things. In particular, I was referring to power before. Um, if you want power and influence over other human beings, um, in many cases you're perfectly willing to endure great discomfort and give up a great deal in order to achieve it. Um, you know, the case of the the um, ruler who alienates himself from his family and his people and everybody and he's paranoid, but he has absolute power. Stalin, good case of that. Um, okay, well, that's just, that's power. Now, I'd like to sort of back up a bit and sort of look at the, the idea of pleasure. Because, you know, as, we, as I like to sort of use as an example, the Walmart Society, the Homer Simpson, the McDonald's or whatever, um, go to the equivalent in your community, wherever that happens to be, and look at the people who go there. Um, like I was at Walmart yesterday. I wanted to buy some wood stain for my porch out back, so I bought some wood stain there walk around and you see all these people and you sort of, you get, you know, a guy like me, I get the impression that I'm walking among the willingly blind. All these people sort of think that they're going to gain some utility in life out of all of this, out of, you know, shopping is an end in itself, consuming things is an end in itself, um, whereas, you know, I tell myself at least that what I want to do out of Walmart is get this wood stain stain my back porch, and now I have a better place to do my yoga. But in what, what, one, what one might call, I guess, high consumerist society, um, consumption of a product is an end in itself. There's a business out there catering to everything that we want. <laughs> um, and you get, as I say, I get the impression when I see the average Walmart shopper, and this might be wrong of me and arrogant of me, I don't know, Arrogant arrogance does blind you. Um, I see a bunch of people who think that the very act of possessing or consuming these things that they buy at Walmart is an end in itself. You know, there's the gross cases of, you know, you just, you buy an entire crate of potato chips and you you know, you know this person's going to bring them home. You can see them in the lineup. They're not exactly skinny. You know, they're going to go home and eat potato chips all day long, perhaps wash down with beer, watching TV or whatever. Um, you know, the ultimate sort of stereotypical person who lives to consume. Whereas I tell myself, who knows whether or not it's uh, I'm, I'm being honest. I don't. I don't know. That I'm just sort of there to buy something that I require for something that is beyond consumerism. Uh, the can of stain that I buy is an addition to an already decent life. I'm not going to uh, Walmart in search of meaning in my life. The difference between, I guess, using something as a tool and, and seeking something as an end in itself, a means to an end versus an end in itself. That's consumerism, isn't it? Consumerism is an end in itself. But again, back up a little bit. Look at that person who bought themselves that crate of potato chips, that, you know, a, a quantity of potato chips that would last me an entire year, if not longer. I never eat potato chips. Um, what do they want? They want satisfaction out of that, right? Now, I would look at that and say, you fool, you're not going to get satisfaction out of that. What if they do? What if they actually gain actual satisfaction? That when they die, they will say, my life was not squandered. Uh, there is an episode in uh, The Simpsons where Homer Simpson arrives at just that conclusion. He has a near-death experience. He swears he's never going to waste an, another single precious moment of his life. And then at the last episode, you see him, and he is laying on the couch eating pork rinds. Fried pork rinds, the ultimate in North American junk food. Um, 
death on a plate, we call it here. Um, but it left, it, but it was sort of deliberately done in a stark kind of way. There was no commentary, no humorous thing. You just saw Homer sitting there for a rather long period of time for a cartoon frame, putting the pork rinds into his mouth and watching TV. The implication is, maybe he's not wasting his life. <laughs> maybe he is a realized soul. Maybe he's whatever you want to call a person who is exactly where they want to be. Maybe the utility that he does get from eating pork rinds is enough. And when he breathes his last, he will say, I did not waste my life. How do I know if these drones at Walmart are completely empty, hedonistic uh, sheep? Or are they people who are actually living in something akin to a paradise where life is just a wishing well? It will give you everything you want. <laughs> um, kind of reminds me again of uh, Bole Mahadev, the, the, Shiva, the a manifestation of Shiva that's completely... Uh, gullible, who will give you immediately what you want, and uh, whatever you pray for, he will give you. And he'll give the other guy what the other guy wants, even if the two desires collide. So it's sort of like Dionysus, two faces. Yeah, he's he's laughing, but is he laughing with you, or is he laughing at you? You're, n you're never quite sure. That wishing tree that is McDonald's and Walmart and all the goodies where you just press a button and you get whatever you want. In other words, you just hand over some money, which isn't that difficult to get in modern Western society. Uh, yeah, I did just say that. <laughs> um, you know, you get whatever you like now. You can have anything. Wealth beyond our ancestors' wildest imaginations where they would have dreamed back in the old days of eating nothing but pea soup and dark bread all the time. They would have dreamed, they would, they would have thought that they'd died and gone to heaven if they had a trip to the local Walmart. Whereas I go there and I find, what a horrible cesspit this place is, full of these disgusting slugs of consumerism who don't even think beyond the next thing they can shove into their face. Um, how do I know whether or not these people are realized or are getting something out of this. I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe pleasure is enough. The gross physical pleasure is enough for these people. But it's not enough for everybody. It's quite clear that there is some vague distinction to be made between myself and the people that I'm kind of analyzing. First of all, because I'm simply analyzing the bigger picture, and I get the impression that these people are not analyzing the big picture. I don't want to live my life stuffing my face with junk food, drinking beer all day long, and surfing pornography. Uh, I forego all of those, which I admit, it, potato chips taste nice, you know, but I avoid them simply because they're unhealthy and they make it difficult for me to do other things. Um, I don't consider foregoing all these things an end in itself, Again, it's not as though I get a masochistic pleasure out of denying myself something. Although, people who have gotten into asceticism, as I have in the past, will say that there is a strange and very profound pleasure, I don't know if you'd call it that, um, feeling when you consciously deny yourself. Um... But that's kind of another subject, which I guess will come up later. What I'm referring to now is um, pleasure as an end in itself might seem empty to people who discuss philosophy on the Internet. But for the people that are down there in it all, it might not be empty at all. They may have found exactly what they want to do with their life. Just walk around with a shopping cart, putting stuff in the shopping cart, and then getting it home and consuming it all, and then doing the same thing the next day or two days later or whatever. How do I know what they want? How do I know what utility they get out of it? I don't know. But I do know that I have sort of, or, you know, I seem to be more circumspect than most people are in that, and I want to see what is it that makes me different from these people. Because I see what they're trying to find. I understand that. I understand looking at it even cynically and arrogantly. I see what that slug at Walmart is trying to find. I don't believe he or she is going to find it. But at the end of the day, I don't know. 
Um, I would say that the desire for utility is inherent, I think, in humans. They're just seeking utility, satisfaction, or experiences in things that I consider kind of beneath me. In the same way that, say, um, King Pausanias of the Spartans, when he raided Mardonius's tent, um, looked at all the luxuries and felt vaguely insulted just by the sight of it all, and said, "Just give it all to the slaves. We've just we've just raided Walmart, and it's full of junk." And that's what these Persians like. Eh? The Persians like stuffing their faces with, you know, sweet, oily, buttery foods and spicy stuff, and you know, ha have a bunch of grapes lowered into their mouth by a pretty little boy or something like this. And the, 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 the Spartans thought, why would you want to live like that? You, you're kings, and, and yet you live like the worst slaves imaginable. You know, is that like the opening scene in Alexander the Great um, with uh, uh, Colin Farrell where, um, where uh, Aristotle is explaining to the young Alexander... Um, we Greeks are not slaves to our passions. The Persians are slaves to their passions and slaves to their appetites. That's just ancient Greek bigotry, but because there were plenty of Greeks that were known for being slaves to their passions and their their appetites. Um, but it just sort of explains the difference between wanting the baser pleasures by a certain standpoint and wanting things that are higher pleasures because they're exclusive. In other words, everybody can have a chocolate bar. Not everybody can be the king of Macedon. <laughs> um, so there are other things that people seek, and they will deliberately forego comfort in order to get them. But the people who are down there, who are actually, you know, shopping at Walmart, the quest that they're on might actually be the same one that I am on. It's just they're looking for utility and satisfaction or looking for experiences in a place where I do not believe satisfaction or good experiences are to be found. To me, uh, uh, an afternoon just spent laying on the couch watching TV leaves me feeling jaded and cranky and vaguely dissatisfied with everything. Um, after a day in the backyard swinging a pick or something like that, I feel pretty darn good, even though my body is all a mass of aches. It just has a strange feeling of, I don't know, being alive when you've when I've become grossly physical, I guess you would call it. Uh, I don't say that everybody else feels that way, but I do. Um, you know, and you sort of think, well, why on earth would somebody want to sweat in the sun all day doing yard work when they have the option of laying on the couch? eating chocolate, watching television. You, you don't have to make any efforts at all. Well, in my hierarchy of desires, I guess, um, the pleasures of the flesh, or at least the gross pleasures of the flesh, um, like surfing pornography or eating junk food or drinking beer or whatever, are low down on the scale of utility. I don't get a great deal of utility out of those things. I get utility out of other things. And and I'm perfectly willing to forego um, the baser pleasures in order to get utility out of things that are not so overtly pleasurable but give me a sense of utility that is much higher than laying on the couch drinking beer. Um, there are still higher levels of this when people renounce absolutely everything, but I guess that's for another video. But suffice it to say, people have different um, value systems, or at least different things that they value. Um, uh, it's not that the things that they want, in my opinion, are inherently base. In other words, a bag of pork rinds, fried pork rinds, is not inherently revolting or disgusting. It just makes me feel disgusted when, when I indulge in that kind of thing. Like, make no mistake, they taste good. I'll have one once a year or something. You know, they're popular in Southeast Asia. I eat them there sometimes, but, you know, it's not an end in itself. How do I know that this person, or that Homer Simpson at the end of that episode, 
is actually doing what he really ought to be doing with his life when he is sitting on the couch drinking beer, eating pork rinds, and watching brain-dead television shows. How do I know that he isn't wasting his life? How do I know that maybe he is the equivalent of the realized soul or whatever? He's doing exactly what he ought to be doing to get the most out of life. Do I have the right to condemn him for that? 